a little bit. We'll see as we as we go along for time. Uh, but this is a word the Lord laid on my heart a couple of weeks ago. Amen. And we're going to share it this morning. Uh, and we're going to begin reading at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 11. And so I have it on the screen for you to follow along as we read. It says, Since then, that we know what it is to fear the Lord, we try to persuade others. Since we know what it is to fear the Lord, that relationship with the Lord, we know who God is, we try to persuade others. Uh, others, and then we're going to skip down to verse number uh, 14. Here we go, 14. It says, For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him. And that's a key to preach right there. That we no longer live for ourselves, but we live for him who died for them and was raised again. And so the love of Jesus compels us to do what we just read in the first verse, to persuade others. Then skipping down to verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come, the old is gone, and the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So each of us have a ministry, and the ministry is to reconcile men and women to God. Amen. That the old would be gone and the new would come. Then we skip down to verse number 20. It says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were imploring you, no, rather, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf to reconcile to God, and God made him, made Jesus, who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And so we're going to take for our text and for the title of our message, verse number 20, that we are there for Christ's ambassadors. You and I, we are now the ambassadors of of Jesus Christ or ambassadors for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are Christ's ambassadors. So the question now is, what is an ambassador? Now, you have heard this before, and I believe the Spirit of the Lord is just reminding of us of who we are and the responsibility that we have and the importance of how we live our lives as followers of Jesus Christ. And so that will be the, the theme of our message this morning. But we are Christ's ambassadors. And so if you were to Google that or search that up, put it in your phone, your tablet, or, or in your computer, this is what will come up on your screen. Or if you were to go old school and get out the Webster's Dictionary. But ambassador, so what is an ambassador? It is an accredited diplomat sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. Or a person who acts as a representative or promoter of a specific activity. And so an ambassador is a person who represents their country or their nation in a foreign country or in a foreign nation. Now I don't know if you've ever seen this man before. I did not until I was preparing this message and searched it up. His name is David McNaughton. I'm assuming that's the correct pronunciation. Uh, and he did not give me permission to put his picture up there, but I'm going to do it just the same because he is a government official. Who is David McNaught? He is a Canadian ambassador, and we have Canadian ambassadors in many countries around our world, and this individual, David McNaught, is the Canadian ambassador in, I would say, the most powerful nation on the planet right now, and that is the nation of the United States of America. And so David McNaught is in the United States, in Ottawa, and he is there with purpose, he is there with reason, he has been appointed as the ambassador, and so he goes to different functions and different meetings, and he sits there and he represents you, and he represents me, he represents the government of Canada, the people of Canada, the morals of Canada, the values of Canada, and so he has purpose and he has reason, and the purpose and reason is that he is to represent our nation in a foreign nation, and so when people look at him and when people are, are talking with him, he is representing us and representing our values, 
representing our morals, representing who we are as Canadians. And so Paul tells us this morning that you and I, we are Christ's ambassadors. Even more importantly, David McNaughton, who is an ambassador for Canada, representing Canada in a foreign land, you and I are Christ's ambassadors representing the kingdom of Jesus Christ in a foreign land. We have been appointed, as, as David was appointed by the, by the prime minister of his day, of his time, whatever year he was appointed, he was, he was appointed by the prime minister or the leader of our nation, and you and I have been appointed as ambassadors of Jesus Christ by the king of kings and by the Lord of lords to represent his kingdom and his nation. And so we are Christ's ambassadors this morning. And so I'm going to share two points with you. Point number one is this. See Jesus in me. And so in that little eyeball as I was doing a little bit of research and preparing the sermon, I thought that was very fitting because it's the face of Jesus in the eye of that individual. What do people see when they look in your eyes? What do people see when they look at you? Not literally looking into your eyes, but what do they see in the life that you're living and in the character that you have and in the integrity that you put out there? What do people see when they look at you? See Jesus in me. As a Christian, as a follower of Jesus Christ, as an ambassador for the kingdom of God, men and women ought to be able to look at me and see Jesus. Because I'm representing Jesus. When they look at David McNaughton, they ought to be able to see a Canadian, no matter where he finds himself, if he's sitting in the old office, or if he's in a meeting, or if he's on the golf course, no matter where he is, he is an ambassador for Canada. And so they ought to be able to see a Canadian, and you, no matter where you go, are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And so when people look at you, what do they see? Do they see a follower of Jesus? Colossians chapter 4, verse number 5. It says, Be wise in the way that you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. And so I need to be wise. Why do I need to be wise? Because I'm my own man and I can do what I want and live the way I want. There's nobody else's business. No. Because now I'm in a different business. I've now been appointed by the King of Kings to be an ambassador for Him in a foreign land, in our world. And so now I have to be wise in the way that I act towards others or outsiders to make the most of every opportunity because I'm representing Jesus Christ. Powerful scripture. The Holy Spirit reminding us this morning. Amen. Matthew chapter 5 verse 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. You've heard this preached down to the years. You know the truth that you are the light. The, the gospel message is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. And so you ought to be shining forth the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now we believe and preach and according to the scripture that we're not saved through our deeds, but that doesn't mean we don't do deeds and we don't do good deeds because the scripture says that people are looking at us and observing us and watching us that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And so we got to be careful with the way that we act. Careful with the way that we live because we're representing Jesus Christ. Always representing Him. Philippians 2 verse number 12. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you and will and act in order to fulfill His good purposes. So God is working in you. God is using you to minister to your neighbor, to your friend, to your husband, to your children, to your wife, to your brothers, your sisters, to those around you with purpose, to fulfill His purpose. Do everything without grumbling and arguing. That's not easy to do, but that's what the Scripture tells me. As I do the work of the Lord and do the things that I have to do for God, sometimes it's inconvenient. 
Sometimes it's, it takes me out of my comfort zone a little bit. But do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a, in a, uh, in a, in a crooked generation. And then you, will, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on you that day, or boast on you the day of Christ, that I did not run or labor in vain. And so Paul says, on that day, if you live right and do what's right, and let your light shine, and you represent Jesus Christ, then on that day, I will be able to stand before the Lord and know that my labor was not in vain. And so just like the ambassador to the United States of America, we are always on duty, even when we are not in an official function, we are still representing the government of Jesus Christ. It's not just a Sunday thing. It's not just a, well, it's Sunday, so i got to get dressed up and put on my Sunday best and go to church on Sunday. But it's a seven-day-of-the-week thing that I am an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And so no matter where I go, I am representing Jesus. And so men and women look at me and they see a Christian. What do they see? Do they see Jesus? Do they see a man of integrity, of honesty, of compassion, of love, and these kinds of things? I think of the ambassador who now represents Canada, and he's in the United States, and he's sitting in the Oval Office, or he's sitting around a table with, with senators and all of these kinds of things, or other ambassadors, and he's representing Canada, and people know that he's the ambassador of Canada, and they expect certain things out of him, but then there's other times when he's just in the grocery store. Or other times maybe when he's out on the golf course and, and he makes a, a, a shot and the shot don't go good. And maybe he doesn't feel so good about that. And maybe he'd like to take that golf club and, and throw it out in the woods or crack it off or maybe say a few bad words. But there's other people walking down or driving along in their carts or people that he's playing with. And when he begins to act like that, you know what? They begin to think that Canadians are like that. That's what Canadians are like. Look at this guy. Man, Canadians, they, they, they just go off the handle when things don't go there. Listen, he's representing Canada when he's on the golf course. Uh, and he's representing Canada when he's sitting in a, in a meeting of, of dignified men and women. He's always representing Canada. <coughs> Same thing applies to you and to me. I'm an ambassador for the kingdom of God. I'm ambassador for Jesus Christ. And so no matter where I go, I am representing Jesus. On Sunday, yes, I'm representing Jesus. Everybody knows that. I come in, I got dressed up, I put on my tie, and I'm looking all sharp and good and all of these things. And you got dressed up and you came to church and you're representing Jesus. It's the Lord's day. But guess what? On Monday when you go into the plant or, or on, on Tuesday when you go into the post office or on Wednesday when you walk around food land or, or on Thursday when you're, when you're having some kind of disagreement with your neighbor that's living next to you, you're still an ambassador for Jesus Christ and you're representing Jesus Christ. Always on duty. Seven days of the week. You're always on call. Amen. Always on call. No matter the hour, something is happening. And so the Prime Minister calls up the Ambassador. I need you to go and sit down with these individuals. This is going on in the world somewhere. And so he calls the Ambassador. I need you to go in and speak on my behalf. Same thing applies to the child of God. Seven days of the week. 24 hours a day, always on call, that you always are representing Jesus Christ. The way that I talk represents Jesus Christ. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. So I mean that break room and conversation is going in a direction that it ought not to be going in. Should I be participating in that? Should I be talking that way? Should I be involved in these kinds of conversations or these kinds of jokes or, or this kind of slander or this kind of, of backbiting or whatever the case may be? The way that I talk, the way that I talk, I'm representing Jesus Christ. I'm always his ambassador. And so I've got to guard my tongue. I've got to watch what I'm saying and how I say it and who I'm saying it to. Because I'm always on duty and I'm always representing Jesus Christ. This is a lifestyle. I didn't just become religious. But I came to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Now I'm walking with him and I'm serving him and I'm living for him. The way that I pay my bills, it also reflects on how I'm representing Jesus Christ. If I'm going off and I'm charging at this and I'm charging at that and I never get back and I never pay it off. Or, or I go off and I borrow this and I borrow that and I never bring it back. You know what? People 
people look at you and they see Christians and they think all Christians are like that. Because you're an ambassador for Jesus Christ. The way that I treat my wife and the way that I talk to my wife, when people hear me talk and when people hear me say things, they are not just looking at me as a man, but they're looking at me as a follower of Jesus Christ. As an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And so even in my marriage. Even in things that ought to be private. And I ought to be able to guard. And keep private. But even then. I also have to be conscious of the fact. That, that I'm an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And so the way I treat my spouse. Reflects. Reflects Jesus. And reflects this church. And reflects the kingdom of God. Because I'm an ambassador for Jesus Christ. The way that I treat my neighbor. Reflects. Reflects Jesus Christ. So if I'm at war with my neighbor. Next week we're going to court. Or next week we're almost ready to come, come to it. You know what? I'm representing Jesus Christ. I'm not there only representing my wishes. And my needs. And, and, and whatever is going on. But I'm also there representing Jesus. In the hospital, in the bank, in the plant, or in the school, or wherever it is you work, or whatever it is you do on the fishing boat, you are always representing Jesus Christ. Uh, I am always being looked at through that prism, or through that light of a Christian, or a follower of Jesus Christ, just like the, the picture I showed you earlier. He is always representing Canada, and he's always seen through that prism of representing Canada. This is what Canadians are like. And so you and I are always representing Jesus, and we are what Christians are like. Second Corinthians 5, since then we know what it is to fear the Lord, we try to persuade others. Open ears, banquets, different things, live streaming, always trying to persuade others, but we're not always trying to persuade them just by what we say. No, we're also trying to persuade them by the way that we live. And by our character, and by our integrity, and by the way we treat each other, and by the way that we treat our neighbors. The way that I treat you represents what Christianity is all about. And so if I've got something against you, and you've got something against me, and, and we're just a part of this church, you know what? That is, that is representing Jesus to the community, and what the church is all about in the community. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so that you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And so that means if you and I are having a disagreement, that's between you and I. That's, that's not for Facebook. That's not for everybody in the break room at the plant. That's not for those sitting around the nursing station. That's not for the other people working in the school or on the boat. Because you're representing the kingdom of God. And so if David McNaughton is in, in some kind of disagreement with, with the Prime Minister or in some kind of disagreement with, with other leaders in our government and he's sitting down with the President, he can't divulge, divulge these things. He can't be talking about these things because he's there to represent the nation of Canada. And in the same way, I have to love you and you have to love me. And people are looking at us and by our love for each other, they see what a Christian ought to be and what the church ought to be. Because we're ambassadors. For Jesus Christ. And so when people look at us, they see Jesus. The question is, do they see love? Do they see compassion? Do they see a Jesus who cares about his community? Do they see a Jesus who has integrity? Do they see a Jesus who loves people? Do they see a Jesus who has a place for people in his church? What do they see when they look at you and when they look at me? What do they see? Because when they look at you, when they look at me, they are seeing ambassadors for Christ. They are seeing Jesus. And so what do they see? Are we putting a Jesus out there that lines up with the Word of God? A Jesus that loves and forgives and is compassionate and is merciful and is gracious that died so that they can be redeemed? What do they see? What do they see? Point number two, as we move on. See others as Jesus sees them. This is something that I have to remind myself of quite often. Because we can see people in the state that they find themselves in. And obviously it's not the way that we're living. And sometimes this judgmental spirit can rise up within us. But we have to be so very careful as ambassadors for Jesus Christ. That we see people the way that Jesus sees people. Because he sees them with love and with compassion. And with mercy. And he sees them with purpose. 
See it as Jesus sees. Matthew 22, I shared with you some weeks ago. And the Lord gives the greatest commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then he gives the second one, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. Treat people the way you would like to be treated. Give people the mercy that you would like to receive yourself. Give people the second chance, or the third chance, or the fourth chance, or the fifth chance that you would like to receive yourself if you've made a mistake one, two, three, four, five times. Love your neighbor the way that you would like to be loved. Treat your neighbor the way that you would like to be treated. See them as Jesus would see them. Look at what Paul said in our text. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade others. We try to persuade them. We are compelled to do so. Why are we compelled to do so? Verse 14, for Christ's love compels us. Because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all must die. That you need to be saved. But it is the love of Jesus that compelled Paul to go out and share the good news of the gospel. And to be shipwrecked. And to be in jail. And to be all of these things. And to be beaten. And all of these things that happened to him. But he was compelled to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ because of the love of God. Did all the people that Paul witnessed to, did they deserve to be witnessed to? No. The jailer who beat him and put him in stocks and chains, did he deserve to be witnessed to? No. But it was the love of Jesus and the love of God for Paul that compelled him to be an ambassador for Jesus because Paul was a murderer. Paul was a persecutor of the church. Paul had done a lot of bad things, but there was a day on a, on a road as he was traveling to do more bad things than the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ appeared to him and changed his life. And so now he looked at the world through the prism of the love of God and the purpose of God and the mercy of God, and it compelled him to be an ambassador. It compelled him to be an ambassador. He saw people the way that Jesus saw people. And he understood the love of God and the mercy of God. Here is a trustworthy saying, Paul says, that deserves full acceptance. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. And so he didn't put himself up on a pedestal. I'm better than everybody now. I'm saved and I'm serving the Lord. And so the ones that are not saved and are not serving the Lord and they, and they got this issue and they got that problem and they're doing this and they're doing that and, and I don't agree with the way they're living and so I'll avoid them and I'll look down my nose at them and I'll be condemning towards them. That's not what the Paul, that's not the way Paul saw things or what Paul did as an ambassador of Jesus. He said, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world for what? To save sinners of whom I am the worst. I am the worst. A sinner saved by grace. And then he says in verse number, you might have to help me out here, Kevin. The next slide, there you go. But for that very reason I was, I was shown mercy. So that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus, might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him. No, brother, the phone's going off. Believe in him, his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Think about the patience of God when you were out in the world and how the Lord never gave up on you and how he came and he knocked on your heart and he knocked on your heart and knocked on your heart until you finally gave your heart to, the, to Jesus Christ and you accepted him as Lord and as Savior. And so the Lord was patient with you. And from that point until this point, there's still times when you make mistakes and still times when you fall and you stumble and you're not perfect. But the Lord is still patient with you. And so we need to see people through the eyes of Jesus and see them as Jesus sees them and understand what God has done for us. He wants to do for them. He wants to redeem them and save them. And, he, and He's patient and long-suffering towards them and desiring that they would walk in relationship with Him. See as Jesus sees. Jesus came into a world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. And so I can't be judgmental towards my neighbor and because of the way they're living because I lived that same way when I was in sin. The reason I'm different now is not because I go to church but because of what Jesus Christ has done in my heart and in my life. And they need that same experience. And so I need to see them the way Jesus sees them and he sees them with potential. He sees them as men and women that he's able to change and men and women that he's able to redeem. He sees them as men and women he's able to 
use and, and to song lead and to sing and to play and to, and to be involved in ministry and all of these kinds of things that, that I can't see. I can't see. In the natural, I can't see. All I can see is the drinking, the smoking, or the divorces, or the this or the that, and see the mistakes. But, but if I look back at my own past, my past is full of mistakes as well. But Jesus saw purpose in me, and he saw a man that he was able to change and mold and shape and save and redeem and do all of these things. And so I need to see my neighbor, and I need to see the men and women around me the same way Jesus sees them. Because I'm an ambassador for Christ. I'm an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Let's look at some more scriptures as we get ready to conclude. Matthew chapter 9, we're going to move along quickly here. Verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. So he's going from village to village, proclaiming the good news. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. What did Jesus see when he sees your son or daughter, your neighbor, your husband, your wife, the one that you're working next to at the plant or where it is you work or whatever it is that you do? You need to understand that he sees them as sheep without a shepherd. And he longs to be their shepherd. He sees potential in them. And then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. You want to know something this morning? Jesus Christ wants to send you out into the harvest field of Barnabas. He wants to appoint you as an ambassador for him to go out and represent him to the community so that they might know there's one that is able to redeem and save and change and restore and do all of these things. Yes, amen. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and they were helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus sees men and women this morning and he longs to bring about the change that only he can bring about in their hearts and in their lives. But he wants to do it through you. He wants to use you in Bonavis. He wants to use you in our community. He wants to use Dylan in Charlottetown. Because we are all ambassadors of Jesus Christ. It's a 24-hour a day job, a seven-day a week job. I'm going to ask the musicians to return as we get ready to conclude. We're going to sing one chorus, and then we're going to ask Dylan to join us in the front. We're going to pray over him after we sing this chorus. But I want you to understand this morning that you are an ambassador for Jesus. An ambassador for Jesus. You're representing Jesus. You're representing this church. The things that you say, the things that you do, and the way that you look at people. You are representing this church and you're representing the kingdom of God. And so when people look at you, even just you as an individual, and the way that you live, they turn Grace Pentecostal Church with the same brush. If you're a hypocrite, we're all hypocrites. If you can't control your tongue, none of us can control your tongue. They, they tar all Christianity with the same brush. Because we're ambassadors for Christ. We're representing Christ. And so if we, if we love our neighbor, then guess what? We're turned to the same rush. We all love our neighbor. That church up there, they love people. They care about people. They listen to people. They forgive people when they make mistakes. And it makes a place for them when they come back and make things right with the Lord. Amen? And so what do they see? Hallelujah. I hope they see Jesus in us because we are his ambassadors. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts this morning.